Intratunnel Fakal Fracture is a nucleus management technique of the manual small incision cataract surgery, in which the lens nucleus is broken inside a sclerocorneal tunnel and removed. Intratunnel Fakal Fracture can be performed through an incision of 4 mm to 8 mm. Up to 3 diopter of the pre-existing astigmatism can be effectively neutralized by planning the incision size and site, eliminating the need for expensive torque IOLs. So in other words, neutralizing pre-existing astigmatism by manual small incision cataract surgery induced astigmatism is also a cataract refractive procedure. Nucleus is prolapsed into the anterior chamber with the Sinsky's hook. Enough viscoelastics is placed between the cornea and superior surface of the nucleus and between the inferior surface of the nucleus and iris. The globe is stabilized with tooth forceps and a vectus is introduced through the tunnel and positioned between the iris and the nucleus. The nucleus is engaged in the lens loop and slowly withdrawn from the anterior chamber while the posterior lip of the tunnel is depressed. Once the nucleus got engaged in the tunnel, then the vectus is pulled posteriorly and upwards. This causes breaking and removal of a part of the nucleus and other part remains engaged in the tunnel. By viscoelastics the engaged part of the nucleus is pushed back into the anterior chamber and rotated so its longitudinal axis was coincided with longitudinal axis of the tunnel. The remaining part of the nucleus is engaged in the vectus and slowly taken out while the posterior lip of the tunnel was depressed. The remaining cortical matter cleanup is done with direct 23 gauge Simcoe irrigating aspirating cannula. Aspiration should be done from the side port only as anterior chamber is remains deep. The anterior chamber is formed with viscoelastics. A single piece foldable intraocular lens is implanted into the capsular bag. Remaining visco is washed out. Port sealed by hydration. Conjunctival flap is reposited. First post operative day cornea was bright clear. We are going to demonstrate 5 mm intratunnel facal fracture in white cataract. Capsular hexis is done and section enlarged to 5 mm. Nucleus is prolapsed into the anterior chamber with the Sinsky's hook. Enough viscoelastics is placed between the cornea and superior surface of the nucleus and between the inferior surface of the nucleus and iris. The globe is stabilized with tooth forceps and a vectus is introduced through the tunnel and positioned between the iris and the nucleus. The nucleus is engaged in the vectus and slowly withdrawn from the anterior chamber while the posterior lip of the tunnel is depressed. When nucleus got engaged in the tunnel, then the vectus is pulled posteriorly and upwards. This causes breaking and removal of a part of the nucleus and other part remains engaged in the tunnel. Remaining nucleus part and cortical matter is flushed out by hydrojet. A single piece PMMA intraocular lens is implanted into the capsular bag. First post-operative day cornea is bright clear with 2020 vision unaided. We are going to demonstrate 5.5 mm intratunnel facal fracture in rock hard nuclear cataracts. Capsular hexis is done. Tunnel is enlarged to 5.5 mm. Hydro dissection is done. The nucleus is prolapsed into the anterior chamber with the Sinsky's hook. Vectus is introduced and positioned behind the nucleus. The nucleus is engaged in vectus and slowly withdrawn while the posterior lip of the tunnel is depressed. When nucleus got engaged in the tunnel, then the vectus is pulled posteriorly and upwards. 
This causes breaking and removal of a part of the nucleus and other part remains engaged in the tunnel. The engaged part of the nucleus is pushed back and rotated so its longitudinal axis was coincided with longitudinal axis of the tunnel. The remaining part of the nucleus is taken out slowly from the interior chamber while the posterior lip of the tunnel was depressed. Remaining cortical matter is clean part. A single piece PMMA intraocular lens is implanted into the capsular bag. The nucleus is prolapsed into the interior chamber with the Sinsky's hook. Enough viscoelastics is placed between the cornea and superior surface of the nucleus and between the inferior surface of the nucleus and iris. Vectus is introduced through the tunnel and positioned between the iris and the nucleus. The nucleus is engaged in the lens loop and slowly withdrawn from the interior chamber while the posterior lip of the tunnel is depressed. When nucleus got engaged in the tunnel, then the vectus is pulled posteriorly and upwards. This causes breaking and removal of a part of the nucleus and other part remains engaged in the tunnel. The engaged part of the nucleus is pushed back into the interior chamber and rotated so its longitudinal axis was coincided with longitudinal axis of the tunnel. Again viscoelastics is placed between the cornea and superior surface of the nucleus and between the nucleus and iris. The vectus is introduced through the tunnel and positioned between the iris and the remaining part of the nucleus is also taken out. Cortical matter is cleaned up. A single piece 6 mm PMMA intraocular lens is implanted into the capsular bag. The nucleus is prolapsed into the interior chamber with the Sinsky's hook. Vectus is introduced and positioned behind the nucleus. The nucleus is engaged in vectus and slowly withdrawn while the posterior lip of the tunnel is depressed. When nucleus got engaged in the tunnel, then the vectus is pulled posteriorly and upwards. This causes breaking and removal of a part of the nucleus and other part remains engaged in the tunnel. The engaged part of the nucleus is pushed back and rotated so its longitudinal axis was coincided with longitudinal axis of the tunnel. The remaining part of the nucleus is taken out slowly from the interior chamber while the posterior lip of the tunnel was depressed. Remaining cortical matter is clean part. A single piece PMMA intraocular lens is implanted into the capsular bag.